Hey friends of Keycloak, nice to see you again. You all know the tokens of Keycloak, the access token and the identity token and uh, the claims in these tokens and that there are mappers to get data from Keycloak into these tokens. And um, yeah, today we will have a look on creating custom mappers to get customized data into our tokens. So grab yourself a coffee and let's do it. Let's have a look to the mapper section of a client. Therefore, we go to a client of our choice, for example, the account console. And there we have uh, the tab mappers. And in this tab mappers, you can create built-in mappers or configure your own mappers. So if you have a look at the add built-in mappers, you see all the built-in mappers ready configured to use. So you can uh, map birthday, the family name, the gender, whatever, locale, email, given name, profile, groups, etc. into uh, your token. And um, of course you can create uh, another uh, token on your own and um, you have different mapper types uh, for your choice and you have a real, a realm role, um, session notes, user address, uh, some hard-coded roles or claims uh, to map into your token and all the things. And um, a, a, mapper, a, a mapper is always a protocol mapper because it's uh, specific to the protocol we're using. So we have the OpenID Connect protocol as the standard protocol and we have also the SAML protocol. Um, if you um, configure a mapper, it's always bound to a specific protocol you're using in your client. So in this case, the OpenID Connect protocol. And um, I created already a custom um, mapper called a lucky number mapper. And I can select it here in the mapper type because I already deployed it to the server. And now I can configure the um, mapper. The lucky number creates a random lucky number uh, during runtime. And I, configure, I can configure a lower bound and an upper bound to have a lucky number in between these bounds and I can configure um, the claim name in which claim I want to write um, these, uh, this value. So I call it my lucky number and then I can select um, to which tokens I can uh, uh, map these uh, values. I can select the identity token, I can select the access token and I can select if these um, well, you this claim will be available at the user info endpoint. So, um, for example, I leave all these uh, switched on and I have to give it a name. So this is a random lucky number. And now I can save it and it's saved for the account console. And you see here we have the run random lucky number. If we now um, um, evaluating the um, access tokens on the identity tokens. We can do this at the client scopes evaluate, selecting a user, take my user, ev click evaluate. Then we can see at the effective protocol mappers, um, there's the random lucky number mapper. It's being used. And if we have a look at the generated access token, uh, we see at the bottom, there's my lucky number 39. And if we switch to the identity token, because we enabled to generate um, the lucky number for all three types, the access token, identity token, and user info, we have also a lucky number. Of course, it's a different one because it's randomly generated every time uh, the mapper is accessed. We have the uh, 52 and last but not least we have the generated user info we have my lucky number 39 so the lucky number is available at all three um, tokens or endpoints we configured so how did i do this we have again a look at uh, our mapper the random lucky number mapper we see we have uh, a name a mapper type lower bound upper bound token claim name and the um, three switches. So let's have a look to the source code. 
I've created a class lucky number mapper, which extends the abstract of my deconnect protocol uh, mapper, which is a good uh, starting point to have used this abstract uh, class because this abstract class already does a lot of stuff for you. And we're implementing um, the OADC access token mapper, OADC ID token mapper, and the user info token mapper. Um, this gives us the availability to map these value to all these three uh, tokens or endpoints, as we already saw. And then we can uh, we have to provide an identity, um, an ID for our uh, mapper, and some configuration. And the configuration is this what you see here: the lower bound, upper bound, claim name, name, uh, token claim name, and etc. So we have. Um, a provider config property a lower bound, which is uh, the, the field lower bound, which has a label lower bound, the help text, lower bound of lucky number, and um, we have a default value, uh, one for the lower bound and 100 for the upper bound. Um, and you can see this here, this is the label lower bound, upper bound, and we have the help text. And uh, yeah. These are the lower bound and upper bounds. And for the token claim name, we don't have to um, implement it um, specially. We can just use a helper class. There's the OpenID Connect Attribute Mapper helper class, which uh, provides a lot of um, utility and helper methods for your convenience. And uh, there's the add token claim name configuration, which just um, adds these uh, this field for a token claim name um, to your own mapper. So you don't have to um, specify ex it explicitly here. I can have a look into it. There's another provider config property and the token claim name and all this stuff. And additionally, also from the helper class, we have the add include in tokens config. Um, these are the three uh, options uh, here below the ID token, access token, and user info. So the helper class um, does this for you if you call the um, proper method in. Then we have some uh, configuration of uh, the provider as always, and we have um, the method uh, set claim. And in this uh, method set claim, um, I'm getting the um, actual values from the configuration during runtime. So this is the mapping model, get the config, and then I get the lower bound and the upper bound. These are these two values uh, at runtime 11 and 88. And um, I calculate the lucky number. And again, with the help of the helper method, uh, the helper class, the map claim method, I map the value into our claim into our token. So that's all you have to do, nothing more. And in this uh, method set claim, you can do whatever you want. So perhaps you can um, do a call to an external system, calculate the values of your choice, whatever comes up to your mind, whatever you need in, um, in your environment. But um, of course, keep in mind, if you are calling external systems, um, this might be uh, bad for your performance because there's some overhead and some, um, yeah, some, it takes some time and not, uh, it's not always um, the best for performance. And uh, yeah, I provide as always uh, this code at uh, my GitHub profile. So there's the Dasnico Keycloak token mapper example in GitHub. Uh, the link is uh, always in the video description. And there's also a test um, for the mapper based on my project Test Containers Keycloak. If you don't know Test Containers Keycloak, just have a look to um, the link I provided in the um, upper right corner. And um, yeah, there's another video of the, about the Test Containers Keycloak. And um, I implemented a test with the Keycloak container. Um, configuring uh, my protocol mapper here below. Uh, same values, 1188, my lucky number, the token claim name. And then during runtime, I get the token, the claim, my lucky number from the token, 
and I assert if the value is between my configured bounds. So yeah, that's it. Don't have to do anything more. Token mappers are really small pieces of uh, software and um, go to my GitHub profile, check it out, implement uh, the provider of your choice, the token mapper of your choice and um, have fun. See you next time. Bye bye.